Weed management and organic production, similar to on the conventional side, is looking at what tools we have to manage the weed challenges on the farm specifically. Um, you, you, a lot of times you inherit the weed problems of the previous owner or producer, and so you need to address what you're dealing with. Now on our farm, we deal a lot with mustard on these particular fields here. Mustard is an early, um, early germinating spring weed that's very difficult to manage in spring seeded small grains. So in this particular field where I have challenges, for example, we did soybeans last year as a later planted summer annual, so we could kill a couple flushes of mustard prior to the planting of soybeans. This year, we did an edible pea crop, which enables us to harvest the peas prior to the mustard going to seed. And uh, following that, then we go to a millet, a millet crop, cover crop that we'll take for our cattle, so we get the value of putting life into the soil and we get an economic return this year. And then we'll follow that this fall with a winter rye is the plan right now. So the winter rye is going to be germinated, it's going to grow in the fall, and it's going to already be shading out the ground so the mustard doesn't get going next year. So in our crop rotation, we've tried to strategically plan around what problem weeds we have in the fields and match up our timing to address our most problematic weed that we have in our rotation. The other thing we have tried to have is a very diverse rotation, so we're constantly breaking all the weed cycles because Mother Nature will adapt to your management. So if I go to all early spring, early seeded crops, my, the weeds that will proliferate like that type of tillage management, early planting, cooler conditions. If I plant late planted crops all the time, later planted corn, later planted soybeans, now I'm gonna get a weed like water hemp to proliferate because I'm planting and I'm always um, growing in that target time of year when that weed is most aggressive. So our, with our crop rotation, we try to manage with diversity, both planting, time of year, the type of crop it is, and address the weeds that we have on our farm. And we have on most of our fields between about a seven and a nine year rotation of different crops in sequence to help break up those weed cycles. Um, and we believe in preventative is better than, and being proactive is better than now doing a rescue treatment. Uh, we have the tools in the toolbox when it comes to a weed burner, rotary hoe, tying weeders, cultivators to do or stay ahead of the weeds. But if we can manage it with the crop rotation to give us a leg up and a head start, it goes a long ways to actually having a successful weed management plan at the end of the season. So we'll typically do a small grain alfalfa. Uh, then we'll go continue on with alfalfa for one to two years, depending on the field, what our goals are. Normally after that, I follow it with corn. Then I'll go to beans, and then I'll sometimes or often go back to corn at that point. Now we have the option to go and use sweet corn, which again enables us to stagger the planting date. Instead of early planted field corn, maybe we'll do field corn, edible beans or soybeans, and then we'll come back with sweet corn, which enables us to give us a couple more tillage passes in the spring or put a cover crop in prior to the sweet corn so we get a real good cover crop planted beforehand. Uh, then we'll do a small grain followed by a winter grain typically and then we'll follow that normally with soybeans or corn uh, on the subsequent years and then start back in that rotation. So weed pressure varies year to year depending on how the weather is during that year. You know if you have a warmer spring, a cooler spring. For example if you get a, a cooler longer spring you typically see more lambs quarter for example. If you have a lot of heavy pounding rains in the spring We'll see a lot of grass, foxtail, barnyard grass. So every year seems to favor a weed species. And so having the diversity of crops enables, I may have a field that gets challenging due to the weather, or maybe we have a wet event, we can't get into the field for a couple weeks. But it enables me across our rotation, I never have a disaster across the whole thing. Not every field is gonna be a problem child. And that allows me then to flex my time and focus then on that field that's maybe more of a problem this year and pull more tools in to try and manage those weeds. Um, the other part of our farm is we use our livestock as a plan B. For example, if I have small grain that gets away or have, has mustard that's getting away on me, we won't hesitate to take that crop, harvest it, rather than let that, that mustard go to seed. We'll harvest it as baleage and feed it to the livestock. So in a sense, our livestock is another insurance policy to make sure that we can continue to get revenue off of different crops depending on the the type of situation that we're dealing with that year.
them. So your early, early spring tillage generally doesn't do a huge effect on thistles and vice versa. Late fall tillage also doesn't do much for thistle control. Putting in a, in a, in a summer cover crop like this enables you to hit the thistles when it's primarily actively growing and then you put in a smother crop which also is highly competitive to the thistle and we found this to be a great way to do thistle management on our farm. <clears throat> so part of weed management or a, a organic strategy is there are times and situations you need to replant. And this particular field we had planted it and the forecast flipped. We went from being forecasted to have decent weather to all of a sudden we were down to close to 32 degrees for a couple nights. What that did was I had a um, seed corn maggot issue because of the I had seed corn maggot issue due to the delayed emergence. We also had seed rot due to the cool conditions, cool wet conditions that we had at that time. And so not only was I looking at a poor stand, but I was looking at a very uneven emergence with a lot of weeds emerged prior to when I could do any mechanical weed control out here. At that point in the season, we were still well within the planting window of this crop. It was, okay, if I let this crop be, and the weeds take off, what is that gonna cost me in management to take care of these weeds? And are they even manageable at this point? Versus if I replant and I start fresh and clean, what's the value of that? Does it bring it back per acre? Now, it costs us about $10,000 to replant on these 74 acres. But even if I had, had a decent enough stand to leave, but the weeds were ahead of me and I had to pay $200 an acre in hand labor cost, that's $14,000 and over $14,000 on 74 acres. So it, we made the decision to replant these acres. We spent the $10,000. And when it came to our walking expense on this field, um, it was about $2,100 is what it came to. So, you know, long term, staying ahead of the weeds right out of the gate is critical for good weed control and organic production. And sometimes it costs money to make sure you stay on top of those weeds. Um, now right now you see my beautiful weeds growing alongside the field. We do have make a practice of mowing around all our fields so this will be mowed before any weeds go to seed and on our farm rather than letting those buffer areas and harvesting a conventional crop off of there our philosophy is on our end rows and our buffer areas is to just mow it. One this is conventional ground. I want to spend my time as far as management of row crop on my organic acres. I don't want to spend that time going on the buffer strips where it's a conventional crop. So, um, so typically we seed down grass alfalfa along our buffers and then just mow those as management. And the NOP requires us to have an adequate buffer. Varies from certifier to certifier what that exact distance is. Uh, and a lot of times they leave that somewhat to the discrepancy of the producer as far as you know what's on the other side of the fence. Do you have an adequate buffer to make sure that there's no contamination on your crop here? Uh, so your certifier will enforce the NOP standards of making sure that you have buffers. And you'll notice way up in the distance we have our signs marking there so the county, our neighbors, anybody passing on the road knows that we farm organically and these fields are managed organically. So this is a weed burner and, and <clears throat> uh, weed burners, uh, weed zappers, um, or electric weed zappers are two tools I think that have gotten uh, or have some misconceptions about them. They are not herbicides. Uh, they have their limitations. They're more effective on some weeds, not very effective on others. It's a additional tool that we have in our management box. It's not something we rely upon for every acre, every year, every crop, every field. Same thing with the weed zappers. Uh, CFS actually does custom weed zapping, the company I work for. So I've seen it work over a wide range of fields, different weed types, different soil conditions, and it has its limitations as well. Uh, it's one, the weeds have to be above the canopy in order for it to work. Um, two, under excessively dry conditions like we are right now, you don't have enough water in the plant to actually get a good t kill typically with the machine. So. These, these, these are good management tools to have in your toolbox, but they're not silver bullets. The only one who has a silver bullet is a Lone Ranger. One of the things I talk about with um, someone starting that transition is what are the absolute necessary critical tools I need to have on this farm? And if I'm looking at corn, I'm looking at soybeans, typically at least I need to have one cultivator and I need to have a rotary hoe. 
Um, now, depending on budget and depending upon uh, financial considerations, the more tools you can add to your toolbox sooner and the better weed control you can do up front is going to alleviate those weeds going to seed and being problems down the road. So obviously there's a cash flow aspect to working with a producer. If we all could just sit down and write a check for the equipment line that we want, uh, everything would be shiny and new behind me. I'd probably be a John Deere salesman. Um, so we all have, all have the limitations of a budget. And one of the things that's critical in that transition period is to spend those dollars that you have on the best tool that's gonna work with the problems that you're faced with. And that's the real value as a, as a crop advisor that you can provide with as you, as you garnish experience. You're gonna be able to sit down with a producer and go, you know what, uh, buffalo cultivator is the right cultivator with your type of weed challenges and your soil type versus maybe another guy, you're gonna go, no, a Danish tooth cultivator is the right one on your type of ground. So experience again, uh, going out and getting that hands-on dirt under the fingernails as a crop advisor that's gonna work with organic man management is absolutely critical in order to give good advice, in my opinion. Um, so we got the weed burner, we have on our farm, we've got uh, four other cult four row crop cultivators that we primarily use. Uh, then I've got a rotary hoe and two tine weeders. Um, and to be honest, today if I had my if I had the pocketbook available, I'd add three more cultivators and another tine weeder in a heartbeat. There's always improvements that we can make, and it, but again, when you're looking at it from a budgetary standpoint, what's going to give me my biggest bang for my dollar at that point in the season? There is no cookbook recipe when it comes to organic to say this is exactly how you do weed management in corn. This is exactly how you do weed management in soybeans. We've never done the same thing twice two years in a row because mother nature, the weather is never the same two years in a row. So I think one of the most important things organically is the more tools you have in the toolbox, the more flexible you can be, the more you're gonna bring the right tool to the field in the right time to control those weeds. Um, right now we're not RTK, I'm, we're looking to add RTK to line up within the next couple years. I think that makes, it allows you to go and from focusing your time on driving the tractor to now focusing on what your implement is doing again on the weeds behind you. Um, the other thing we're looking to add is a row guidance. Uh, row guidance, row guidance cameras, uh, and the number of producers I work with. Um, what we look at is one, the speed of which you can cover a field. On a first pass cultivation, if I can cut my time by 30, 40%, that's huge on the number of acres I can get over in a timely basis. The other thing we look at is the closeness to the row again. With row guidance, if I can knock a couple more inches closer to the row, again, if I go from a, a six inch, eight inch management band down to a four, I'll, I now have reduced my weed potential area with a shovel by 50%. And um, anytime we can eliminate weeds, uh, <clears throat> eliminate weeds next to the row with more precision, we're gonna end up with a cleaner crop at the end of the year, which is gonna mean next year's crop is gonna be cleaner. Uh, we try to run on our, our farm the philosophy of a zero weed management. I don't want weeds going to seed, not just for this year and the economics of this year, but it's going to cost me the next five to 10 years to get that weed species maybe back under control. Some species of weeds I'm more concerned with, you know, obviously giant ragweed, cockle burr. There are some weeds we're more religious about getting out of the field. Other weeds such as pigweed, lamb's quarter, those are more annual broadleaves you're always going to have to fight. If I have a few escapes of those, I'm not as concerned. So we'll focus our, for example, our walking dollars off and on those, what I call uh, noxious weeds in organic versus you know, spending that money and time on weeds where they're not as much of a concern. They're easier to manage with a weed burner. They're easier to manage with a weed zapper and things of that nature. Our goal on our farm is I don't like to have a walking bill bigger than about 35, basically the minimum. We go through and we try and just get the escapes with hand labor for several reasons. One, if I'm at this stage and I'm pulling out weeds, I've already lost potential out of the crop. If I'm having to come in here and pull weeds that are above my canopy, they've competed already for nutrients, for water, and for sunlight. So if I'm just going through and just getting a few escapes out of the field, not, they don't really affect yield. That's more just keeping the weeds under control for next year, not allowing the seed bank to be built. You're never gonna reach a point in your organic farming career where you can say, I'm done. 
this is the end of the road. There's always things that you can do better on the management size, and the more precise you can be in the field, the better results you're gonna have at the end of the day. I would say one of the key things I would tell any CCA or any agronomist working, gonna be working with organic growers, you need to familiarize yourself with the tools that are used on organic farms to control weeds. Just no different than when you got out of school and you would be working with conventional farms, you familiarized yourself with the different herbicides. Herbicides on the conventional side, it's getting familiar with your tools in the toolbox. Same thing organically. It's getting familiar with the tools that a producer is going to have in their toolbox, how to apply them, how to use them to their optimum use, what you can do with the different implements, how to set them under different field conditions, size of weeds, size of crops. And so in order to be successful on the weed management side, you need to familiarize yourself with the tools that a producer is going to have in the toolbox. Uh, and that can only be done with A, getting experience yourself or going to field days, talking with equipment dealers uh, and gathering that wealth of knowledge so you can pass it on to your, your uh, customer to do a good job for them.